Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Join me now in a spirit of prayer. Dear God, God of all peoples in every time and place, we remember that you are one. We ourselves struggle with working together and reaching out in love to each and every one. Help us to be more like you, seeing your image in each person we meet and seeing your creative hand in each and every thing. We pray that you would open our eyes and our hearts to embrace the reality that your love knows no boundaries and that no one is outside of your gracious care. Work in us and in our actions so that they would truly show that we believe this. We pray for those who lead within your church and within our nations and cities. Stir within those leaders servant hearts that they may lead that they may be mindful of what is good for all. Inspire them and help them truly work to bring peace and wholeness. We pray for those who have ones they care about who are sick and suffering, and those who have lost loved ones to death. Help us to recognize that wherever any are suffering, we are all diminished. Do not pray so much for the right words to say as for the courage to stand with these people and care for them in their pain. Help us to be your healing presence for them. We also pray for those that suffer due to natural disasters as well as hardships caused by human beings. We pray that you would help them to find a place of safety and shelter. We pray also we touch our hearts, that we would do what we can to create places where refugees can come. Remind us that some of us have unknowingly entertained angels when we have opened our spaces to strangers and refugees. We have such great need of your wisdom these days, Lord. We pray that your spirit would fill our minds and our hearts, that we might see your ways more clearly. Help us to find your peace and joy in our lives and share that peace and joy with others. Teach us to live in these times as your son taught those first disciples. Help us remember all he taught as we remember the prayer he taught them, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be our name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Hello, I am Pastor Anita Cobb. Won't you listen to the scriptures today? Our scripture for today is found in Psalm 98, and it reads, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast from the ram's horn. Shout to joy before the Lord, our King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The word of God for the people of God. Hi, I'm Pastor Carolyn, and I'm pleased to bring you the message today. Will you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. For years I worked with children, and a favorite game of toddlers is to act and sound like animals. Ask any small child, what noise does a dog make? How does a bird sound? And they will smile and laugh and join in the fun. And with a group of children, a chorus of animal noises will greet you. Our scripture today, Psalm 98, proclaims God is worthy of praise for the marvelous works of God, the righteousness of God, the justice of God, and the salvation of God. Each of us was created by God to be in relationship with God and with others, to love God and to share that love with all that we meet. And especially, and most importantly, we were created to sing the praises of Almighty God. And our scripture today teaches us that all of creation joins us in this song of praise. We see similar passages in other parts of the Bible. Isaiah 55 verse 12 says, You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Isn't that a wonderful image? Psalm 96 invites, Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. Psalm 148 extends the invitation further to the sun and the moon and the shining stars, to the sea monsters, fire and hail, snow and frost, indeed to the wind and to the mountains and to the hills, to fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and livestock, creeping things and flying birds. In fact, the last great words of that ancient hymn book we call the Psalms, Psalm 150 says, let everything that breathes praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So perhaps it's perfectly sensible for nature to restore so much of our soul when we're out in nature, if we have that privilege because we can hear the wind howl, we can hear the trees whisper as the leaves move, we can hear the birds sing and the frogs croak and the crickets hum. We can hear nature singing their song of praise to God. I recently purchased a new clock and it awakens me with sounds of nature rather than a screeching alarm and I can't tell you what a pleasant start it is to each day. Although I did chuckle the morning that I had set it on rooster and I heard the cock crowing in the middle of the city where I live. Nature is constantly singing the praises of God. Lest you think this is just poetic license by the writers of the Old Testament, 
We see in the New Testament, when Jesus travels to Jerusalem for the Passover, Gospel of Luke tells us, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones would shout out. So the message in Scripture is clear. All of creation was created to praise the Creator. It's in our very DNA, the structure of our beings. It's why and how we were created by the Creator. So let us sing our praises to God. But if we were to be honest creatures of God, we also have to recognize that sometimes it's easy to sing our praises to God. And sometimes it's not so easy. But Scripture advises that we are to sing praises to God in all circumstances of life. At times, I struggle to sing my praises to God. I have trouble joining in the song with all of creation. Have you ever had days or times like that? I remember a time about 15 years ago when my siblings and I and our cousins lost our parents. We lost our aunts and uncles. We lost our godparents. We lost everyone in the generation above us in a very short time span. And I was struggling to catch my breath. We barely had time to grieve one person before we heard about the loss of another. And in three and a half years, we lost over three dozen relatives. I got to the point where I was afraid to answer the phone for fear of more bad news. And I felt as if I were treading water, barely able to keep my head above the surface. It was enough just to get from day to day, and I was struggling to pray to God, let alone sing praises to God. Sometimes worship left me weepy. Certain hymns just left a lump in my throat, and communion could occasionally be painful to participate in. So I had difficulty singing my praises to God. I was just trying to survive, get through each day, go to work, get done what I needed to get done. But after a while, I realized that other people were praying for me and for my loved ones. And when I couldn't pray, they prayed for me. And when I couldn't sing a song of praise, they sang for me. And when everyday life was a challenge, others encouraged me and gave me tangible messages of support. I would receive a card or a hot meal or a shoulder to cry on, a phone call when I needed it, just the right scripture that I needed for my comfort for the day. And I needed those prayers and bits of encouragement for longer than I could have imagined to move through my period of grief. And I'm not sure how I would have made it through without those encouragements. It took time for me to move to a different place, for me to feel gratitude and extend myself to others who were in need, who are around me. Community, it is so important. Community, whether online or in person, on the phone or over email, sometimes we just need one another. Have you ever noticed in Scripture that the praise of God does not happen in isolation? It happens in community, even in nature, the ocean along with the birds of the sky, the mountains along with the trees. Creation sings the praises of God in community. Community is what helps us to rejoin the song with all of creation in praising God. Community is what can help us through to survive another week, another day, perhaps another hour when praise is difficult. Do you know someone who is struggling? Is there a word of encouragement you can offer that person? Are there prayers that you can give? 
Perhaps someone you know has trouble singing God's praises right now. Perhaps you can hum the tune and offer a hand. Offer a word of encouragement, a gesture of hope. After all, we're all in this together and you will need encouragement one day if you are not the one who is in need of encouragement right now. Perhaps you are the one who's struggling right now. Have you let anyone else know about your struggle? Ask God to give you the strength to speak about your troubles to others and especially to God. If you can, perhaps you can try the things that I tried to help me get through my period of grief. Try to listen to the birds and the trees and the wind. And when I was hurting and I couldn't get outside, I searched the internet for sounds of birds and the ocean waves and rain and rustling leaves. Just hearing those sounds of nature brought me some peace. Perhaps I needed to hear the songs of praise again. And perhaps hearing those sounds of nature brought me back in touch with that tune that's encoded in my very DNA. Sometimes I would search for videos of children laughing. That was usually quite effective in helping me to get through the next hour, the next day. And one of the small but extraordinary significant things that I did during this time of extended grief was that I tried to spend time each day, no matter how small an amount of time, giving thanks to God and being grateful for being alive for another day or another successful hour of surviving, another successful five minutes of getting through. For any small pleasure that I might have had, a glimpse of blue sky, the laughter of a friend, a good meal, over time my sense of gratitude grew and my heartache eased. And it really helped me to remember that God knows our hearts even our unspoken prayers. And that the song of praise to God goes on even when we are having difficulty singing along. In time, I rejoined that song of praise and I was able to encourage others who were struggling. That is what community is and what Christian community does. It mourns, it celebrates, it gives thanks and encourages, it offers thanks to God it sings the praises of Almighty God. Won't you join in the song of creation? As the psalmist says, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. And we are the children of salvation. We were created to enter that song of praise. Will you pray with me? Abiding God, your handprint is visible in all of creation. We know we were created to be in relationship with you and with others. We were created to join all of creation in a song of praise to you, but sometimes we struggle. Have mercy on us. Help us to feel your presence and to be that holy presence for others in their time of need. Help our community to be a place of healing and comfort and help each of us to reach out to others in your name. Bring us all to a place of gratitude so that we can join in the eternal song. Amen. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior Trying to follow whatever life brings Shaping our lives to Christ's blessed example Happy, how happy the songs that we sing How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Stepping in the light, stepping in the light How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Led in paths of light 
closely as Jesus is leading When we are tempted to turn from the way Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us Happy, how happy our praises each day How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Stepping in the light, stepping in the light How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Led in paths of light Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance Footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love Looking to Christ for the grace freely promised Happy, how happy our journey above How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Stepping in the light, stepping in the light How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Led in paths of light Today we are reminded that the Bible calls us to shout for joy. And sometimes when we come to this table, we come with hearts full of joy and happy to share our joy with everyone. But sometimes we come to this table in pain, trying to find solace, trying to remind ourselves where God is in our trouble. And this table is that thing that reminds us that this is where God is. But more than that, this table is where the community of believers are and the community of people who are seeking. This is a table where all of us come and even when we're alone, we're reminded that this is the community of God. And here we are welcome and we are welcome to lay our burdens down or we are allowed to share our greatest joys. But this is the place where we come together before our Lord. So now will you join me in prayer? Holy God, we thank you that you have given us this gift through your Son to remind us that we are your people and you hold us in your hands, whether we are joyful or whether we are sorrowful. Bless now all who partake in this communion. Bless the bread and bless the cup that it nourishes them and reminds them of your love. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus, who gave us this feast. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, he took a cup. And he gave it to them, and saying, Drink this cup, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember our Lord's death resurrection and life until he comes again. So all is in readiness. Come and partake. To the creator of all that is seen and unseen, who placed a song of praise within our very being and gave us hearts to reach out to others into community. Be with us in our joys and our sorrows. Embolden us to sing your praises now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 